I made one of these videos before with the nicer tractor we have um, but the wind noise is ridiculous so I'll make another one uh, you look at this old banger and you think well why would I want a tractor why would I want an old banger like this this was actually alright this one um, my uncle used to use this one all the time uh, but for some reason we can't get the injectors to bleed but it doesn't really matter because we got uh, this is like 1964, so I don't know, somewhere in the 60s. We've got another one that's like a 79 model that's bigger, that's got a cabin, uh, and it's a Chamberlain. Um, and we do most of our stuff with that anyway. Um, and that was what I made the first video with. But you may see these when you move out into the country or move into an off-grid sort of a, a place. Um, you'll see them stuck at the front of people's properties uh, with a sign on, you know, three and a half thousand dollars or whatever. And you're thinking, so why would I want one? I don't want to play a paddock. So why would I want one? Well, you can do a whole multitude of things. Now, a lot of these devices, um, almost all of them are diesel. Almost the whole lot of them. I've only come across a couple that aren't. I mean, literally like a couple. Uh, I've actually seen one advertised, it was a petrol, um, but it was a different model, different brand altogether, different age. Um, but almost guaranteed they'll be a diesel. Now, let's get to the crux of it. There's a hole thing there. You put a pin through there and you'll have some sort of rod you can buy as an attachment or you'll have a what they call implement or device that will have one on it. You also have one you can't really see there, which is on an arm, which is the same as this one you can see, which is on an arm, which is able to be hydraulically lifted, which has adjustments to allow it to not get in too tight or whatever. There's, for some reason they have adjustments on um, the sides there, uh, which helps your spread basically of these two arms. And what they call this, this piece here, and that, and that, is a three-point linkage. Now almost anything you can dream of will hook to a three-point linkage. I'm talking mowers, I'm talking backhoes, I'm talking... <sighs> forklifts, um, you know, bale grabs, whatever you want. Um, you know, it's uh, the list is flaming endless. And you can just go into these farm machinery places and buy these things. I've actually seen a backhoe attachment that would probably fit on this one or maybe the other one we got. $2,200 second hand. And then you can dig holes for your, your drainage, your posts, your, your whatever, you know, if you've got big trees you want to plant that you've bought that have been kept in a nursery for like five years and they're like, you know, six foot tall, well, why dig it by hand if you can get this thing to do it? Um, and a lot of it is based around, there's a Perspex here, that little shenanigan there, uh, it's, I don't know, uh, hang on, I'm getting closer. You see this little notch there, it's a bit dark, but you can see this little notch there. Um, and there's a shaft that'll hook to that, and you can turn that on and off. You put the clutch in and then you push some lever, and it turns that on and off. And then you've got this other lever, um, basically your throttle lever. Uh, see that rusty looking one right there in between... Yeah, right about where my finger is now. Um, that's your throttle lever. Uh, and as you put your throttle lever down, and, and once you put that piece in gear, that spins faster and faster. And that'll run your mower. And then you say, well, what about you know, bale grabs and forklift attachments? Well, it's hydraulic lines. And you have fittings that click in. You use the hydraulic oil in the tractor. And you say, well, what about mower height? Well, remember those three points, the one there and the one down there? Yeah. That's also got a hydraulic rig, and I hit a lever, and that will lift them up or put them down. Um, and the hydraulics here that allow me to open and close a bale grab 
are on those lines. They've got like plugs that just click straight on the end. Yep. Um, and I think there's about two different kinds of plugs or something like that. And there's a lever that'll run that as well. And while this thing may need a jump start and quite frankly looks like a big heap of rust uh, with a lot of old grease at the back, um, you can do so much with it. Uh, pull trees out. Um, oh yeah, it's also got a like a normal towing point. And there you can put a ball in that if you want. Uh, but this one's like a bit of a U-shaped one. Um, so this is going to be very dark. But basically it's it's a shape like that. And then the pin drops through the top of that piece there. And you can tow stuff. Um, and you can even move that part around. Um, because, uh, gosh, lighting again. Uh, you might see there there's multiple holes um, to move it onto different angles. And of course, there's a you know one in the centre as well. Um, but you know, while these things may look like old heaps of junk, um, if they sell an implement for it, oh, you got rakes as well um, that rake up things. Um, the way it's going, I, I wouldn't be surprised that. Uh, oh yeah, no, there are. There's wood chippers for them as well. Yeah. You you dream of it. There's probably something already for it. Uh, but when you see the, the words 3, capital P, and capital L, that means you can hook it to one of those old bangers. And, you know, I've seen giant saws that attach to the back of a tractor to cut, literally just cut through the logs. And they've got a circular saw blade that's just huge. This one, because it's so old, it's got another fancy feature. And that's this here. And you can chuck this one into gear. Um... And that'll start spinning that. Now, this is when they had belts. When there was old, uh, like, giant chaff cutters um, and a whole stack of other old stuff, back in the day of, you know, like, hell, like, <laughs> early 1900s and stuff like that, they would run them on these big belts, and they would have, like, a steam-powered tractor with one of these, and they'd drive it up into place... And, you know, put the belt on it. I don't know if they reversed it a little bit or they, they pushed a chaff cutter along a bit or what they'd done. But they'd have a belt. There's a great big wide belt that would run off the steam tractor onto this old chaff cutter. And this one is old enough that they've bothered to put it in as a feature. And so you could get your big um, belt onto that and start that up. And even though this is built in like 63 or 64, something like that, uh, you could still run equipment from the, you know early 1900s, 1910, around there, um, with it because you've got this ability to run the, the big belt on it. But this you will not see on newer ones, absolutely not. Um, it's not even on the one that's that's built in 79 uh, that my dad usually uses. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it looks like a heap of junk. It'll probably need jump starting. It'll look terrible and could do with a damn paint. Uh, the funny thing is, as bad as a radiator is, they never seem to overheat. <laughs> I don't know what it is. They just they never seem to get very hot, regardless of how crap the radiator is. Um, and, you know, mismatched tyres and all that. But, look, if you go into a property and they can start it for you, like, just like... Bang, she's going within 30 seconds or a minute. Um, and there's not a great heap of black smoke. It'll, it'll always have black smoke when you first start them. Always, guaranteed. It's just old diesels in general. I've seen light trucks that are built in, hell, the 90s that are blowing smoke. Um, but what I will say is that if the black smoke stops within a minute. Um, there will always be oil stains. <laughs> it just seems to be diesels in general um, because, you know, oh, it's just old tractors in general as well. Um, uh, but people sort of go to fill them up and they miss a bit. Uh, the fuel tank on this one is, is right above the, the what's his name, above the steering wheel. Um, but, yeah, if they can sort of get this thing started within you know, a minute or whatever, um, and 
it's not blowing black smoke within a minute of running. You're liable that you've got a good one. Um, the real proof in the pudding comes, of course, when you start pulling things and whatnot. But you'd be surprised how something that's so cheap can achieve so much. Uh, you can pull out trees. Don't go for the damn base like an idiot. Think about the leverage concept here. This is what's helped us get out a lot of these African box thorn. You go higher up and you can pull it down. But you want to be very careful with doing any funny shenanigans with trees that are of any significant size at all. Um, don't touch things that are above three metres sort of a thing. Um, and you'll be safe like that. But, yeah, you know, if you've got little dead trees or dead bushes you want to get out, you can get them out. You can do a whole stack of other things. And, you know, go looking in some of these uh, farmyard machinery joints and say... What have you got in the way of three-point linkage attachments? I want a blah, blah, or I've got to do blah, blah. And you'll be shocked at what they can pull out. Um, and you can buy them new too. They might cost you six and a half, seven grand for a new one, anything from two to three and a half for a second-hand one. Um, but you'd be surprised at what you can do, you know, especially when it comes to, like, things you never would have thought of, you know, blooming uh, wood chippers and, and backhoes and... Not just pull around the paddock devices. Oh, and the other one that's a real beauty is uh, generator welders. You can hook them on. Um, and, my gosh, you can power stuff like you've, like you've never seen. The electricity available when you hook a generator onto one of those uh, power takeoffs is it has got to be seen to be believed. Um, but a lot of these big generators also... Uh, will have a uh, welder attachment and it'll be an old school arc welder but then like you can go welding up shed frames and building steel things and, and whatnot and and all that where you had nothing before um, and it's great if you're building a shed or something further out of the way uh, because uh, these generators are significantly priced um, people don't like giving them away uh, they don't even like selling them, let alone giving them away at a cheap price. Um, but you got to realise that the generator you buy at the hardware store or at Harbour Freight or Bunnings or something like that, yeah, no. You can't do diddly squat compared to what you can do with one of these PTO-powered ones. You can run your entire house without batting an eyelid. You can run welders multiple devices that take a lot you can run a stove you know um, don't be surprised if they're even got a three-phase plug which may allow you to use what's known as an instantaneous hot water system um, you know there's there's a lot of stuff so well it looks like scrap metal don't just sort of look at it and just go <coughs> not for me um, because if you're trying to set up a little homesteady style thing, um, you know, they're, they're fantastic. Oh, by the way, I've been digging through a few um, magazines of used machinery. I've even found very small tractors that do have three-point linkage. I'm talking ones like that are under 10 years old, $4,400. I could not believe it. Um, <laughs> Couldn't believe I also found for 9,900 a front end loader. <laughs> it's actually got a cabin on it and seems to be articulated in the middle in a single cylinder. Um, there's other ones called Kanga, there's other ones called Dingo, which you will use over here a lot, but they're a little platform thing you sit on the back of with four wheels. Uh, they're only very weak, but they're, they're good for just doing small stuff because they're a miniature one. They're, they're single cylinder as well. And I had those in there too. Um, but yeah, that's a bit of a thing on why the hell would I want a tractor.